Holy Bible reading to request divine union theosis, part 12, chapter 47 to 50 of the Old Testament, and we continue with the New Testament. And as we know, our Christian Orthodox saints and the fathers of the church teach us that reading two chapters of the Old Testament and one chapter of the New daily, we're going twice as fast, we're reading four of the Old and two of the New in about a year, or in our case would be six months, we request our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us divine union with him. It's a very, very important thing. This is why man was created. And uh, once you have it, you feel as if you never were alive up to that point. Now that we're continuing with the Genesis chapter 47, where we left off from part 11. 47. Now Joseph went and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brothers, their flocks and their herds, and all they possess have come from the land of Canaan, and indeed they are in the land of Goshen. So he took five men from among his brothers and presented them to Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph's brothers, What is your occupation? So they said to Pharaoh, Your servants are shepherds, both we and our fathers. They also said to Pharaoh, We have come to dwell in the land because your servants have no pasture for their cattle. For the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. Now therefore, let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, saying, Let them dwell in the land of Goshen. And if you know of capable men among them, make them overseers of my cattle. Thus Jacob and his sons came to Egypt, and Pharaoh, king of Egypt, heard about it. So Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, saying, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is before you. Have your father and brothers dwell in the best of the land. And then Joseph brought in his father Jacob and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Jacob, How old are you? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The days of the years of my sojourn are 130 years. Few and evil have they been, but they have not attained, not attained to the days and years of my father's sojourn in life. So Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before him. Thus Joseph settled his father and brothers and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramesses, as Pharaoh commanded. The, then Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with bread, according to the number of individual persons. Joseph confronts the famine. Now there was no food in the land, for the famine was very severe, and both land, the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan, were devastated by the famine. So Joseph gathered up all the money found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the grain they bought, and all the uh, all he doyed uh, out to them. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And thus, when the money ran out in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in your presence? For our money has run out. And then Joseph said, Bring your cattle, and I will give you bread for them. If your money has run out, so they brought their cattle to Joseph, and he gave them bread in exchange for their horses, sheep, oxen, and donkeys. Thus he fed them with bread that year in exchange for all their cattle. When that year ended, they came to him the next year and said to him, We will not hide from you, my lord, that our money has run out, and my lord has also our possessions and cattle. There is nothing left in the sight of my lord but our bodies until our la and our lands. Why should we die therefore before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread. And we and our land will be servants of Pharaoh. Give us seed and we, that we may live and not die, that the land may not be desolate. So Joseph bought all the land of the Egyptians for Pharaoh, for every man of the Egyptians sold his land to Pharaoh because the famine was severe upon them. Thus the land became Pharaoh's. Now as for the people, he moved them into the cities from one end of the borders of Egypt to the other. Only the land of the priests he did not buy. For the priests had rations allotted to them by Pharaoh, and they ate their rations. Pharaoh gave them, and therefore they did not sell their land. Then Joseph said to all the Egyptians, 
Indeed, I have bought you and your land this day for Pharaoh. Look, here is seed for you, and you shall sow the land, and that, that it shall come to pass in the harvest that you shall give one-fifth to Pharaoh. Four-fifths shall be your own, as seed for the field and for your food for those of your household. So they said, You have saved our lives. Let us find grace in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's servants. Then Joseph made it a law over the land of Egypt to this day, that Pharaoh should have one-fifth except for the land of the priests, which did not become Pharaoh's. Joseph's promise to Jacob. So Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the land of Goshen, and they acquired possessions there and increased and multiplied exceedingly. Now Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years, so the length of Jacob's life was 147 years. Thus, when the time drew near for Jacob to die, he called his sons Joseph and said to him, If I have found grace in your sight, put your hand under my thigh and deal with me in mercy and truth. Do not bury me in Egypt, but let me lie with my fathers. You shall carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burial place. So he said, I will do as you say. Then he said, Swear to me, and he swore to him. So Israel bowed himself on top of his staff. Chapter 48. Jacob blesses his grandsons. Now it came to pass after these things that Joseph was told, Indeed, your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, and went to Jacob. Thus Jacob was told, Look, your son Joseph is coming to you. And Israel strengthened himself and sat up on the bed. Then Jacob said to Joseph, My God appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said to me, Behold, I will increase and multiply you, and I will make of you a gathering of nations, and give this land to your seed after you as an everlasting possession. Now therefore your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you, in Egypt are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Your offspring, whom you, begot, who you beget after them, shall take possession of their inheritances within the tribes of their brothers, but as for me, when I come from when I came from Mesopotamia of Syria, Rachel died beside me in the land of Canaan on the way, when there was but a little distance to go to Eph, to Eph, Eph, Ephrath. Then I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. Then Israel saw Joseph's sons and said, "Who are these with you?" So Joseph said to his father, "They are my sons. God gave me here." And Jacob said. Bring them to me that I may bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim in reason by reason of old age, and he could not see. Then Joseph brought them near him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, I had not thought to see your face, but in fact God has also shown me your seed. So Joseph brought them from beside his knees, and they bowed down with their face to the ground. Then Joseph took them both. Ephraim with his right hand towards Israel's left hand, and Manasseh with his left hand towards Israel's right hand, and brought them near him. Thus Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, guiding his hands knowingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. Then he blessed them and said, God, before whom my father, fathers Abraham and Isaac were well pleased, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day, the angel who redeemed me from all evil, bless these lads, let my name be named upon them, and the name of my father Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into great multitudes in the mind, in the midst of the earth. Now when Joseph saw his father put his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, so he took hold of his father's hand and removed it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head, so Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, for this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be exalted. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. So he blessed them that day, saying, By you, Israel, all be, will be blessed, saying, May God take you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And as he set Ephraim before Manasseh, then Israel said to Joseph, 
Behold, I am about to die, but God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to you one portion above your brothers. I am giving you Sechem, which I took from the land of the Amorites with my sword and bow. Chapter 49 Jacob's Final Words to His Sons Now Jacob called his son and said, Gather to his sons and said, Gather together that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. Gather together and hear, my, you my sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my children. You are hard to bear. You are hardened in your self-will. Unstable as water in your insolence. You went up to your father's bed, then you defiled it. Simeon and Levi are brothers. They accomplished their injustice from their free choice. Let not my soul enter their council. Let not my honor be united to their assembly. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they hamstrung an ox. Cursed be their anger, for it was self-willed, and their wrath, for it was hardened. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Judah, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's cub. From being a shoot, my son, you have grown up. He bows down and slept as a lion and a cub. And who shall rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from his loins, until Shiloh comes. Shiloh, of course, is the, um, uh, symbol, the symbol of Jesus Christ. Not a lawgiver from his loins until Shiloh comes, and to him shall be the expectation of the nations, binding his colt to a vine, and his donkey's colt to his branch. Donkey and the colt. This is how uh, we read yesterday that uh, he entered Palm Sunday, our Lord Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem. He will wash his garments in wine, and his clothes with the blood of grapes. His eyes are gladdened from the wine, and his teeth are whiter than milk. The Zebulun shall dwell by the sea coast. He shall be near a heaven, a haven for ships, and his brother shall adjourn Sidon. Issachar desired what was good, resting between the inheritances. And seeing his resting place was good, and the land was fertile, he set his shoulder to hard work and became a farmer. Dan shall judge his own people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, a viper lying in ambush by the path that bites the horse's heels, that its riders may fall backward, waiting for the Lord's salvation. As for Gad, a raider gang shall raid him, but he shall raid them in close pursuit. As for Asher, his food shall be abundant, and he will furnish dainties for rulers. Naphtali is a spreading stem, bestowing beauty by its pro produce. And Joseph is a grown-up son, a grown-up son that was envied. Oh, my youngest son, return to me. They devised evil plans against him and reviled him, and the archers were taking aim at him. But their bows were broken by force, and their sinews of the arms of their hands were enfeebled on account of the hand of the mighty one of Jacob. Thence he who strengthened Israel is from the God of your fathers, of your father, and may God, and my God has helped you and blessed you with a blessing from heaven above and with a blessing of the earth containing everything. By reason of the blessing of breasts and the womb, he made the blessings of your father and mother stronger than the blessings of stable mountains and everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the brothers he led. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf in the morning he will still be eating and in the evening he will provide food the death and burial of jacob all these are the 12 sons of israel and this is what their father spoke to them and blessed them and he blessed each one according to his own blessing then he charged them and said to them i am to be added to my people bear me with my fathers in the cave of the field of ephron the hittite opposite Mamre in the land of Canaan, which Abraham brought from Ephraim the Hittite as a possession for the burial place. 
There they buried Abraham and Sarah his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah his wife, and there I buried Leah. The field and the cave there were purchased from the sons of Heth. Thus, when Jacob finished commanding his sons, he drew his feet up into the bed and breathed his last and was added to his people. Chapter 50 Now Joseph fell on his father's face and wept over him and kissed him. Then Joseph commanded his servants, the, uh, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. Forty days were required for him, for such are the days required for those embalmed. And the Egyptians mourned for him seventy days. So when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph spoke to the princes of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found grace in your sight, speak in the hearing of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, saying, Behold, in the grave I dug for myself in the land of Canaan, there you shall bury me. Now therefore let me go up and bury my father, and I will come back. Then Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father, as he made you swear. So Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, as well as all the house of Joseph, his brothers, and his father's house. Only their sheep and oxen they left in the land of Goshen. There also went up with him both chariots and horses, and it was a very great gathering. Then they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond the Jordan, and they mourned there with a great and very, and very solemn lamentation. He observed seven days of mourning for his father. So when the inhabitants of the land of Canaan saw the mourning and the threshing floor of Atad, they said, This is a deep mourning of the Egyptians. Therefore its name was called Mourning of Egypt, which is beyond the Jordan. Thus his sons did for him as he commanded them. For his sons carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Mashpelah, opposite Mamre, which Abraham brought, bought from Ephron the Hittite as prosperity for a burial place, property for a burial place. And after he buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt, he and his brothers and all who went up with him to bury his father. Joseph comforts his brothers. When Joseph's brothers saw their father was dead, they said, Perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil we did to him. So they came to Joseph, saying, Before your father died, he commanded, saying, Thus shall you say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the injustice of your brothers and their sins, for they did evil to you. Now forgive the injustice of your servants of God, of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we are your servants. So Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for I belong to God. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. Now therefore do not be afraid, I will provide for you and your households. Thus he comforted them and spoke to their heart. Joseph dies in Egypt. So Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his brothers. When Joseph lived 110 years, Joseph saw Ephraim's children to the third generation, and the children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, were also brought to Joseph's knees. Then Joseph said to his brethren, I am about to die, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land to the land of God swore to our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Thus Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him and put him in a coffin in Egypt. That's the end of Genesis, chapter 50, and we continue with uh, the first chapter of Exodus in the next reading. And now we continue with the New Testament, Matthew chapter 23, Abuses of Authority. Then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do, but do not do according to their works, for they say and do not do. For they bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them one of their, uh, with one of their fingers. But all their works they do 
to be seen by men, they make their phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of the garments. They love the best places at feasts, the best seats in the synagogues, greetings in the marketplaces, and to be called by men, Rabbi, Rabbi, but you do not be called Rabbi, for one is your father, the Christ, and you are all brethren. Do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. And do not be called teachers, for one is your teacher, the Christ. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Pronouncement of Judgment But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore you will receive greater condemnation. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you travel land and sea to win one proselyte, and when he is one, you make him twice as much the son of hell as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, whoever swears by the temple it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies gold? And whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gift that is on it, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift? Therefore he who swears by the altar swears by it and by all things on it. He who swears by the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it. And he who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who sits on it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weather matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanliness. Even so you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous, and say, If we had lived in their days, the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore you are witnesses against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up, then, the measure of your father's guilt. Serpents, brood of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? Therefore, indeed, I send you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them will you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city, that on you may come all the righteousness, the righteous blood shed on the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechial, who you murdered in between the temple and the altar. Assuredly, I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. Uh, Zechariah was, of course, John the Baptist's father. He was murdered at the time he was in the Holy of Holies, and uh, he was about to um, prepare the um, uh, incense, the holy incense to offer God. The, f uh, the fate of Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate, for I say to you, you shall see me no more until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Chapter 24, Destruction of the Temple. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him 
the buildings of the temple, and Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. The beginning of birth pangs. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will all these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. The Great Tribulation. Therefore, when you see all the see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel a prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountain. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. This here he refers to the Maccabees. Uh, let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes, but woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babes in those days. I had asked my spiritual counselor about this, and he says that's because, he says, let it not be on a Saturday or in the winter, because they could not travel on Saturdays. They, they, it was a day of rest, Sabbath. Sabbath. Um, now, and, the, and the, we continue reading. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved, but the for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is a Christ or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if you say, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go. Or look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. For whatever the car wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Now immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heavens, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. No one knows the hour. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender, it puts forth leaves. You know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near, at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not by no means pass away. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. When two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. 
but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. I had asked my uh, spiritual counselor, but I actually he told us in a lecture, in a sermon, he said, the uh, coming of the Son of Man, the coming of the uh, Son of the Virgin Mary, is at each one's lifetime, the end of their lifetime. Okay, it's not that it's a regular event, it's going to be a, a general event happening sometime in the future. It will happen to each one of us when we close our eyes. And we have to give an account of our life. Um, we go on reading, chapter 24. We must be loyal. And our Lord Jesus Christ goes on to say, Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his, fast, his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour when he is not aware of and will cut him into two and appoint him to his portions with, a, with the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And we'll continue with, with chapter 25 tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to read the footnotes of this. The uh, severity of the winter weather or respect to the Sabbath would prevent many faithful from fleeing quickly in the time of departure. A spiritual interpretation given by the fathers sees the Sabbath as symbolizing idleness with regard to virtue and winter as indicating fruitfulness uh, with regard to the uh, fruitlessness with regard to charity. Thus a person who departs this life in such a spiritual state will suffer judgment. In what manner will Christ come back? The event will be unmistakable to the whole world if there is any question or doubt that alone is the evidence that he has not returned. As Christ returned, Return will shine from east, so Orthodox Christians, wherever possible, worshipping facing eastward, is symbolic hope in anticipation of his second and glorious coming. Now, according to the fathers, the sun, S-U-N, will not be destroyed, but darkened in relation to the glory of Christ. In other words, the sun will appear to be dark by comparison when Christ returns in the fullness of his splendor. And uh, we saw that before in the uncreated light you saw in the images before i mean that, that's the light that uh, moses had shining on his face and uh, the hebrews told him to cover his face because they just couldn't look at him they were blinded by the light okay um, that's the uncreated holy light the holy shekinah glory the sign of the son of man is the cross which will be re revealed as a standard for christ's impending judgment while at his first coming, Christ came in humility and mortality. At his second coming, he will be revealed in power and great glory. This generation refers to all believers at all times, the generation of the church, and not uh, merely to those alive at the time of Christ. Now, according to St. John Chrysostom, Christ tells of the angels being unaware of the exact day of his return, so that men should not seek to learn what angels do not know, and to forbid them not only from learning the day, but from even inquiring about it. According to Matthew 13.32, and in Chrysostom's Matthew's text, Jesus declares that the Son also does not know the day of his own return. Chrysostom teaches this is not to be understood literally, but is a figure of speech, meaning that Christ though he revealed to all the signs that will accompany his return, will not reveal the exact day to anyone, and that believers should not be so uh, brazen as to inquire of him. The second coming of Christ will entail a sudden revelation of judgment. One will be taken to heaven and the other left for eternal condemnation. The separation of the saints from the wicked will occur at the coming of the Son of Man, 
and not, as some teach today, at a certain time before his second coming. The Lord's purpose in this discourse is not to make people experts on end-time prophecy. Rather, it is only so that they can watch, continuing in virtue and obeying Christ's commandments. Is war this warning is illustrated in the parable of the returning master. And we'll continue with chapter 25 tomorrow. God bless you and mark you as his. Thank you for your support. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.